Hey, welcome back. I want to talk to you about how we can add some text in front of an image whereby we get an outline if the text is in front of an image. And where the text is behind the image or it appears to be behind the image, you get a different colour. That is totally possible and it's known as a parallax effect that we can easily do in Elementor using a tiny bit of CSS code and just a little bit of trickery, but it is really, really simple. Um, there are many ways you can use this. You could use it in front of an image. It could even be used on a background section. I'm gonna very quickly show you what I mean by the background section, but I'm really focusing on the text in front of an image. So let's get on with it. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe and share. Please share and follow us just so that you can keep up to date with all the amazing things we do with Elementor and WordPress to help you, your clients and your business. We have a section here with one column and it's got a bit of padding of 50 pixels at the top and 50 at the bottom. Why? It doesn't matter. It's just because I wanted to make it easy to see on the screen. Now, if I was to go to the section, I could stick in an image like so. Okay, let me just move myself there. I could stick in an image like that. And uh, in fact, let's just make this a little bit bigger because you can't really see it very well. Let's just make it 200 by 200 for now, okay? And this image that we have in the section, I could either have it going stretch across the full width or have it as a boxed or whatever I want. And then when I add my text in front of it, the text can either be on the image or it can be kind of bigger than the image. So if I very quickly, just go over here and drop in some heading and I just type in a uh, web, web squadron. That is us, by the way. I can't even spell our own name. Right, web squadron. I'm not worried about the style here, by the way. Okay, I'm just going to get black text, typography. I'm just going to go with uh, Roboto and we'll make this about 100. We'll make it 125 and we're going to give it a weight of about 900. Okay, so there we go. Look, web squadron. Okay, it's pretty, pretty simple. There's nothing massively exciting going on here. The beauty about me doing it this way is that I can get the text to be perfectly in the center or wherever I want within the section because you can adjust the height and everything and it's over the image. Now that image, if I really, really wanted to, I could make it a cover image. So I could say, right, this is now gonna fill up the full cover. At, oh, by the way, let me just get this off put it default. There we go. This is now going to fill up the full section, but now my text is completely over the section. I could then, in effect, maybe go for a contain, and I could now start to offset it. So I might say center left, uh, center right. I can position it where I want, and I get this effect here. So what I'm doing here, we could do. However, you are making it a lot harder for yourself because we want that text to actually sit behind the image and a version of it to sit in front of the image. So doing it as a background isn't entirely recommended in my opinion. What we're instead going to do is let me just put this back over here. Let me make this be just 50 again. I know I'm waffling, aren't I? Because you know we want to get the text effects, but stay with me. So I just want to show you why the background section, not a great idea. We have some text. We have 50 padding above and below. I'm now going to drop in a image just below here. And I'm going to pick one of my images from over here. We'll go for, uh, these are all test images, by the way. We'll go with this one here. It's quite a big image. We'll go with full. And I'm going to make this image, the width of it, be about 250. I think 250? Yeah, 250. At the moment, though, the text is over the image because that's the way widgets work. When you add things in Elemental, they sit above or below one another. If I go now to my header, and I go to advanced and I go to positioning, okay, I go to absolute, right? Do you see what happened? It's already moved a little bit. I'm now going to say that this image here, if I pick vertical height, I'm gonna increase it. I'm gonna put it about here, roughly about there. And I think, yeah, that, that, that kind of works for me. Yeah, okay. So if I now just update this and preview it, Every time you scroll up and down the page, that text is always going to be positioned there over the image. So let me just do this. Look, it's not actually going to move because there's nothing to move. So let me just add in another section. That was just, well, darling, man, what are you doing here? There's nothing to actually do. Let's just do minimum height, make it massive like that. Hit update. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now if we view that, look, the text is always going to be moving with the image, okay? But it is now in front of the image. That's the key thing. At the moment, it is in front of the image. Now. On this text, I'm going to add a bit of movement. I'm going to go to motion effect. 
I'm going to go to scrolling effect and on the scrolling effect I'm going to add a bit of a horizontal scroll. So if I click this now, I'm going to say, does it does the direction go to the left or does it go to the right? I'm going to say it goes to the right. So if I now just update that, I'm not going to mess around with this offset and the start and all of that. If I now just view this and I scroll up and down, look, can you see that? The text is now moving across. So it kind of comes in like that, okay? We could add another motion effect so it appears and then it goes across, all right? So let's just do that so that you can see what I mean by that. So the effect of this is gonna be the motion effect is gonna be on, no, not that effect there. The entrance animation is gonna be fade in left, like that. And I'm actually gonna say that the duration is slow, like that. Okay, let's refresh that. So what would happen is as you load up the page, it's gonna come in and then it will do that. All right, as you scroll up and down, okay? I hope that's really, really simple, but it isn't giving us our outline, is it? Because at the moment, the text is black. I want it to be transparent when you're over the image. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm now gonna go over to my, let me just put on the navigator so you can see what we got. We've got header and we've got image, right? I'm gonna make a copy of this image. So I'm gonna duplicate it. So we now have exactly the same image coming over at the same time. All right, so if I was to just do this and I now preview this, it comes in at the same time. There is no delay, all right? You can't even tell, but that is actually two headers over there. Let's get rid of that. So two headers coming in at the same time and they have the same motion effect. It's always easier if you do this at the time rather than adding a motion effect later because then you've got to make sure you get it exactly right. Now the second header, this is going to be in front of the image and the original header is going to be behind the image. So header one, and I'm going to change the title of this if I click it to be um, outline header. I'm going to call it outline header. I'm going to go to advanced and the Z class for this, because this is going to be in front, you know, the, 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 the layer that's right in front. You can put 99 if you want to go all the way to the end of the spectrum, but you could also just put in, say, let's just go with 10. Okay. Now the image is going to sit behind the outline text at the front. So I'm going to give this a Z index of five. Okay. And the header, the original header that will sit behind the image, I'm going to give that a Z index of one. And I didn't have to go with one, five and 10. I could have just done one, two or three, but I want to make a point here. The original header is one right at the back. The image is five. It's now in front. The outline text, which has not been made into an outline text, will be 10. OK, are we OK with that? Right. Now let's make the outline text actually outline. Right. So if we now give this a class name and I'm going to call it outline text. OK, you could call it outline header. You could call it stroke text, stroke header. You could even just call it stroke. It's up to you what you want to call it. I've called it outline text. I'm going to go down to custom CSS in the advanced tab. And down here, I'm now going to paste in a bit of CSS. So I've pasted this in. Now, nothing has actually changed. And if you watched the previous video, you would have seen me go over this before. This, this outline text, the stroke is zero pixel. Therefore, there is no stroke. And even if there was, it is black. So you're not even going to notice it. But what if I now change this, OK, to be two or one? We could go with two or one. It doesn't really matter. We'll go with two. And I put in FFF, right? We now get an outline text. Can you see that? Slight problem, though, is that at the moment, that text is black still. We're not getting a transparent effect, but that's because if we go to the outline header, we go to style for the outline header, not the one at the back, the outline header where we've applied the stroke. Let's make the transparency of this we could make it semi-transparent so you still get a little bit of a dark shade or make it fully transparent like that. Totally. Now then, what's going to happen when I now view this? Let's go to preview. It slides in and look at that. As it slid in, we got the outline effect and watch what happens as I slide up and down. Look at that. It's moving. And you're now getting this total parallax effect. This is dead, dead simple. OK, and it's just a really cool way to do it. And I hope you now understand if you did it as a background section. Getting the text to sit behind 
it can be done in a very complicated, convoluted way. And I don't want to go there. I want to keep it simple. But if you've got an image, okay, and you could you could trick the viewer into thinking your image is your background section by making it a very big image, whatever you want. But you have your original text behind the image, and in front you have a copy of the text, but this time you've added in the stroke CSS code, okay, and you've made it transparent, or you could have added it. I mean, I could have added in a different color, right? It doesn't even have to be transparent. I could have gone over here and says, right, okay, we're gonna go for a slight bluey color, and we're gonna go with uh something like, I don't know, something like that, for instance. Okay. Bear in mind, but if you do that, it will apply across every other color scheme you got there. But if you're very careful, you could just add a slight hint of another color in there. So if I now view this, we now preview the changes now. It's going to slide in and we get this slightly, slight bluey effect going on there. So you can be creative with what you want to do and how you want to do it. But I hope this helps you with a parallax effect for your website. Look at it. Here we go. I hope you like, subscribe and follow and share and I'll see you soon.